Good evening. Welcome to the Tuesday, October 8th, 2019 regular selectmen's meeting. Is all the selectmen are here along with the town manager, the town clerk, the assistant town manager, uh, assistant town planner, I should say. Is uh, you have a lot we, of titles. You have a lot title. of titles. You might as well you know, start adding. Eventually, to <laughs> um, we have a planning board member and and a member of the public. Uh, please stand with me and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> we have the uh, meeting minutes from our September 24th meeting. Is uh, Selectman Manning, Cobb, and I were the ones that were uh, there. So I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes as presented. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? And two abstained. I'm assuming you guys are abstaining. Um, first, public comment. The public comment is uh, please step to the microphone, state your name, and uh, address all questions and comments through the board. Hey, Terry Wright, Berwick Community TV. Um, I'm just up here this evening to remind people that we've got Trunk or Treat coming the end of this month on October 30th. And to remind people that BCTV will be open that evening. We're going to have the studio opened up with our green screen. So kids and parents can come in, see themselves on TV, have some fun with our uh, sound system, and um, probably get some candy while they're here. Um, so please remember to stop by. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? We have no public hearing reports of committees as uh, BCTV just gave their report. Is uh, Do we have anything from Vision Berwick, James? I'll be quick because you'll hear from me later. Um, so in Vision Berwick, we're, um, about half of us are jumping on the comprehensive plan uh, committee. So some of Envision Berwick's moving from implementing the comprehensive plan to actually kind of recreating the comprehensive plan. Um, there's other projects going on. We're still moving the park forward. Uh, we'll be planning again for the concert series. It's a handful of other projects we'll be working on. Um, so you might not hear much from Envision Berwick other than that. Um, but um, yeah, we do have uh, room as always for the comp plan committee. And if anyone just wants to attend, they're op always open to the public. Thanks, James. Uh, we have no department reports tonight. Nope. Is uh, <coughs> under their appointments, presentations, and under guests, we have James back up here. But I'm going to take something out of water. It, actually, it's not even on here. I don't think. Is uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Is uh, Michael Larue's been an alternate member of the planning board, and uh, through <coughs> is uh, it's kind of slipped through our uh, hands here. Is we haven't appointed him to be a full term member as uh, he is entitled to do. He requested that we do that. As, um, I don't know if you need to hear from Mike. He's been up before us before. He's yep. Envision Berwick, Planning Board, Man About Town, <laughs> his uh, new father. <laughs> so, congrats. Is, um, um, do I have a motion? So moved. The second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? I told you it'd be painless. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Now it's time for James's presentation. Oh, is he going to want to move? He's going to blind, blind us. Yep. Chair over, Ken. Yeah. Hello, uh, my name is James Bellissimo. I, um, I'm a planner for the Berwick Community Development and Planning Office. And as you learn, I'm also the chair of Envision Berwick. So I call this the Downtown Makeover 
because just about every square inch of the downtown needs to be reimagined or revamped, kind of like with the, the parking lot across the street. Um, we have a lot of little projects and segments that uh, need to be redone. Um, so, Ooh. so this is an area that's been studied extensively. We've had dozens or maybe a dozen community engagement sessions. We've worked with architects, engineers, um, urban, uh, urban designers, urban planners, uh, developers, and everything in between. So we have a clear idea of what is wanted downtown, what's needed, and possibly what's most important is actually what's possible and what's feasible. So it's important to continually step back and see the big picture. We're building something for generations to come. Um, I really think of this as a 100-year 100 100-year 100 play. And we're going to see unbelievable changes in the next two to five years. But ultimately, if it's not something that's going to be uh, a foundation for generations to come, uh, it's, it's not worth doing. And I think we're, we're doing it the right way. Um, so this is a comprehensive thing. Everything works together. And this presentation is an attempt to look at as many projects or the most impactful projects downtown that we have to do. So what's needed? About 13 power lines, uh, power poles should go underground along Sullivan Street. Speed tables, it could either be just a stamped uh, colored crosswalk or it could be raised a little bit. Um, these serve as markers for pedestrians across the street and it also signals the cars to slow down. Uh, flashing beacons, uh, RRFBs, as the uh, street engineers like to call them. They, uh, I, I'll have, I have examples of what they are and later on the slides. We have about 3,000 feet of sidewalks and curbing to be done. That'll be our responsibility. About 50 street trees. If you see most every concept has about 50 street trees in there, they add up. 48 street lights. We need both traffic signals need to be replaced. Optimizing our parking spaces. So again, like the parking lot, when you restripe and optimize it, we picked up 13 parking spaces. Our bus shelter should be improved. Along Sullivan and School Street, we can pick up 45 on-street parking spaces. And we're looking at uniform benches, uniform trash receptacles, signage, kiosks. And I'd invite you to think about what else it comes to mind as a, as a priority. So the picture to the right is my beautiful Photoshop work of what downtown Barrow could look like without the power lines and some of the poles. We already have a quote from CMP for both Sullivan and School Street to be underground. My recommendation would be not worrying as much about School Street because um, it seems like School Street will be more auto uh, focused where people that want to get through Berwick can go down School Street and uh, Sullivan Street should become more pedestrian friendly um, so we should ha have it look <clears throat> as beautiful as it, as it can be and underground infrastructure I really feel like is one of those things that we could skirt on and just say well it's gonna be it's an $800,000 cost and you know we could do sidewalks so um, let's not do underground infrastructure. However, I think once everything's new, we'll take a step back and go, oh, the power lines are going to stick out like a sore, sore, thumb, sore thumb, and it'll be missed. I was going to say that, but uh, this is one of my favorite streetscapes. This is a downtown Concord. Uh, they got the pressed asphalt and wide sidewalks and decorative lights and you can see there's no power lines so note on sidewalks we did do a uh, sidewalk inventory and a priority list and on the right is just what the red or highest priority sidewalks broken out and the picture to the, picture to the left is just an example of a 400 foot segment that um, 
think we would be pretty competitive uh, to have that funded by a grant that would connect a CACS grant that we're lined up to win. Um, we'll get mo more into that. And then that would connect to Great Falls Park. So these are segments um, based from the traffic study. And if you look at the bottom left, the star will be a reference point to where the project is. Um, so in this segment here, the big things is getting a sidewalk or crosswalk from uh, just in front of Spence and Matthews across to basically the brewery and then having a crosswalk by the bridge as well. Um, you'll see that uh, new, new sidewalks and there is a um, bump out there where a uh, parking spot used to be that's too close to the street light. So what that does is it narrows the, narrows the road, but also provides a uh, larger space for pedestrians. And again, the stoplight needs to be replaced here. So when you replace the stoplight, that theoretically with the high, higher tech stoplight should help with the traffic circulation because the timing should be optimized based off the cars that are actually there. This is an area that would be good for a speed table or just maybe just simply the pressed asphalt colored crosswalk. That, then this is just directly across from the town hall. There's a shared bike lane symbols. And then also we want to narrow the street as much as tolerable or toler tolerated. And what we do is basically mimic the street improvements to what the Bollards has simulated up to this point. And this is down Sullivan Street. And I <coughs> point out the on-street parking because that is a answer to the, I guess, the desire for private developers to want to create uh, off-street parking, which takes up valuable commercial space that could be used for businesses. So getting as much on-street parking as possible, which also serves to slow cars down, makes it more pedestrian friendly. Um, you notice the left side those sidewalks will definitely be our responsibility. Uh, the right side, we assume, or at least I assume, will be the developer's responsibility because that'll be part of their project. And that's kind of the same deal. This is just along Wilson Street. I have it high, the, the right segment there, that'd be town responsibility, and everything else is frontage on the developer's property. Uh, this just shows this another, another stoplight here. Um, we have an issue with, I guess, trucks blowing through the stoplights, and it's either a problem of visibility, and if it's a problem of visibility, the new, a new traffic light can be more reflective. If they're just blowing through it, then I, I don't know what we can do, but it's not, that one's not my problem. Uh, this is uh, CAX grant. This is three segments put together. Uh, the CAX grant's 2023. And uh, what happens is you cut into the green space a little bit and you tee up the intersections, which should help out with the awkward Sawmill Hill, um, School Street intersection. You add uh, sidewalks and you narrow some lanes down, put some bike lanes in there. So it's, that's a really good project, um, but it's a, it's a ways away. Unfortunately, we have to wait. <clears throat> So site amenities, as I mentioned, benches, and there's street trees, trash receptacles. Uh, actually, Mike LaRue did the kiosk here. He did this work. And we actually have a woodworker that has volunteered to make uh, at least one for us. Um, informational kiosk. You do one at Great Falls Park, maybe one downtown. These are the beacons. They got one in... Um, Sanford is the one that I've seen, and it, it actually works really well. You press the button and just indicates. South Burwick has them now, too, for crosswalk. Oh, they do? For the town hall and the, and the central school. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Seems to work well. Just another thing that makes it safer. Signage. So over time, uh, we now have our branding. And, and this, th this, this might be the, the sign um, theme. Uh, it'll be close to this, or we might update it a little bit to match what became officially our branding and over time every single there's ha, there's probably dozens of signs downtown so over time replacing them with something that's uniform and then we have the lighting plan that was done a couple years ago which shows 
um, where the street lights should go based off of the pole. And then that just shows Great Falls Park, which is at the end of um, Sawmill to Moulton Street. And the Great Falls Park and the Outfall 7, which is mandated by the MS4 program, they're integrated together. So for example, we have a nice sidewalk that comes down Sawmill to Moulton, but that also doubles as a feature which directs the water into a uh, filtration system. So how does it all get done? As my dad would always say, one step at a time, one project at a time. Um, I know it's a lot to throw at you, but we've already been doing this work and uh, just, just check them off one by one. The good news is there's, there's lots of pots of money out there. CDBG, uh, CACs, we have a grant lined up for. Uh, Maine DOT has three programs there that we can, we can utilize. We might work out some private public partnerships with the developer. And a lot of it is, like I mentioned, some of the developer will be their responsibility. And then with the TIF, just a quick note on the TIF, um, right now we actually gained, a I think a million dollars in value in our TIF already from, from the reval. Um, so moving forward, we, I think we have 16 or 17 years left in the TIF. Um, if you just ballpark it, if over the life of the TIF, it's a $10 million average in the TIF, which at first it'll be, it'll go from 1 million. If there's development, it might go to three. Five years from now, it might be eight. 10 years from now, it might be 13, 14. So average that together, $10 million average on the assessed value and bring in two and a half million dollars to the TIF. And this is the breakdown of the, the cost and the possible funding sources. So Sullivan Street, you might go right for the, right for the TIF. It could be CDBG. Um, and the timeline is we need to do this, obviously we need to do this before the sidewalk, sidewalks go in. We need to replace the two traffic signals. That's $500,000, 250K each. Um, that is the, the municipal partnership initiative or whatever it's called. Um, or CACs, we could use th those funds. Um, we should go for it, it as soon as possible and definitely before the 2023 grant because we need a new traffic signal for the new traffic uh, alignment for, for the, the bridge intersection. The MS4 project, we basically need to do that when the MS4 program um, they pretty much we were mandated to have that outfall done by a certain point. Um, we might be looking at a bond for that for that project, or there we can tie in a couple different. Maybe it's not a bonding for the entire project, but you might maybe tie in a dip, few other projects, recreational based grant programs. So you have the three thousand feet of sidewalks, and that's again those programs. And then you got your lighting. 200, it's, that's 205,000 for uh, 48 poles and the actual lighting fixtures themselves, the conduits, the design. Um, yeah, and then we got the 2023 uh, intersection project. So th that's what we have to do on our end as a town. How we get there is kind of obviously it's up to you guys, but that gets us um, really where we need to be and, and to and to really have downtown revamped. So that's all I got for you, and I just have a really nice, nice picture for you to look at. <laughs> I'd be happy to answer any questions or clarify any, any points, or I can go back to the... I'll, I'll step up and, and just make some comments. You know, these, these are things that you know, different groups in the town have been looking at over the period of the last five or six years. And as James said, said is we know we're not going to be able to do them all at once, and some of them are going to be a, a long reach for us to do. But is if we really want to, you know, present Berwick as the place where people in business want to come to. 
is we need to do something to improve our downtown and make it more attractive, make it more business and pedestrian friendly. So how we're going to get to this to the end point is going to be a long you know, time coming. So yeah. I don't know what else to say right now other than it's going to be a lot of work. Thank you very much for the presentation and sure. the, the work behind it. <laughs> James, we talked about a rotary, a rotary over by the Getty Station where the bridge comes across from Somersworth, right? And we decided there wasn't enough land there? Not enough land, cost, um, just the will to have one. No you know, way. I just, no way. Plus, it's, it's pretty close to the railroad was one of the problems as well. You think that someone would help? Because even with, with the traffic there, you think the state of New Hampshire and the state of Maine could get together and get something straightened out in that intersection because it holds up, it does screw up the railroad if the train comes. Oh, yeah. And it backs up into Summersworth. I think. Any way of doing something jointly? I do. I do think that reconfiguring the intersection and getting a new traffic light in there is going to help. I think it's. I think it's. I think it'll help the circulation. We have to get a new light. Or can we just put up one of those? The camera that hooks to it, and it reads how many people you know. And switches the light better. Than, it's not time right. Right. No, I think that's part of it. You have to get the light, and then you need the camera. New. You need the actual. The system itself needs to be completely new. It, it, the problem. One of the problems we're having with the lights is that they're so old. They're having a hard time getting parts to fix. The ones we have. So. We have a brand new. We, we have the brand new um, stainless steel case over there for wiring and stuff right. for it. So it's just because they're doing the same thing in the Franklin Arterial in Portland. They're putting those cameras and the lights there to help move right. that traffic out of town. And those are old lights. Mm -hmm. They're not replacing the lights, from what I understand. They're just adding that camera to it or whatever that is a camera or whatever that thing is. I thought we had cameras up there already or sensors of some sort. Yeah. The the sens the sensors up there are for the uh, emergency, emergency vehicles. vehicles. Okay. Is right. they they're, they're set to go off as gotcha. the the ambulance sense. and the fire and police so could, approach. Could, like could, could we like go over and adjust it so say in the morning or uh, at night we you know it, it does we watch it and say okay we got to have this one on longer and this one on shorter or whatever is that being done? No, I think I think that's why we need the new James, the if you guys speak, oh, you need to I was hoping that that one would pick me up, but I, yeah, yeah, I should know better. Shame on me. No, yeah, I think I think that's why if we get a new traffic signal, that's what would happen. I think that's why that's part of the reason why we need a new one. Okay. Because it would adjust based off the actual traffic and the actual right. wait times. That's that's according to our, our traffic engineer Malone McBroom. Plus the company that works on these uh, out of uh, Cape Port in uh, Kenny Bunkport. And, and they have been out several times to fix these. They have a hard time getting these little parts. And they keep telling me that we need to, they're junk. It's a state highway. So the state's not liable to fix those? <clears throat> nope. They're we, under. We might be, we might. <laughs> <laughs> because it is. It goes to Route Nine. Well, we should yeah. be we should be able to get some grant funds for that. Maybe Beth could go to Augusta and find some money to put it. Right. Well, like, so we shouldn't be holding the. the there's got to the be there's got to be money in the pot. Steve Landry, who's in charge of that program, uh, I've, we've spoken to him a number of times. He's been here to talk about these intersections, and there's got to be money. And and sometimes it's, there's no funding there available to, for us. So but we keep hounding him. And she'll want to get you, rid you of us. You know how it is with the state. There's no funding. There's never any funding. But all of a sudden, they can find funding if there's something. We get. We put enough pressure on them. They can find the funding. You, you know what I'm saying? You can see yeah. other yeah. things that happen. Right. If you flip out enough, they might decide to grease the wheel. We we are Steve in touch with Steve Landry place. on a regular basis. Believe me. And he's been here several times. So. That was good, James. Thank you. Um, no unfinished business. Town manager's report. Uh, we broke ground for the new state fire station on Monday um, and also demolished the Esterbrook School, which was down in one day. And I was over there t later this afternoon and 
he's already getting cleaned up. He expects to have it completed by the end of the week, or if not by Monday, um, which includes the concrete pad. He has also started putting in the access road and opened that up. Uh, and we've got some very large culverts that have to go in, 42 inch. Uh, we have to have those in the ground uh, by October 15th. Otherwise, we have to wait till June. And, and uh, Renault Industrial says he can have it done by then. So we're moving ahead on that. 71 Sullivan Street, which has been a long planning project, is uh, finally got approval. Uh, their fact finding is October 17th, and after that, we can start doing some work over there. We're going to put in some drainage uh, pipe and around the swale to keep the water from uh, going, make it go onto the street on Sullivan Street. We are going to try to get it seeded. I mean, there's a big wide area that we have to put some topsoil down on both sides of the fence, uh, and we're hoping that we can get some uh, grass growing. Uh, before it gets too cold. Uh, the floors in the auditorium have been done. They did a great job. If anybody wants to come and see it, come up to the town office and go upstairs. It's, it's quite beautiful. Um, and what else? Uh, we talked about the boiler. Um, it's, that's a, it's a risk we take if we try to band-aid it and get it through the uh, winter. I, I was hoping because we didn't have any funding, we may have to uh, based on what your recommendations are in direction, um, take the money from the Lena Clark Fund. We have enough money there to fix it and replace and do the work, but um, it would be a major impact on the interest that we collect. Um, and we were in, in mediation with the Teamsters. Um, we had one meeting this week and we're scheduled for the 28th. And hopefully we can finish it up. The only thing we have left to discuss and come to an agreement on is wages. Uh, so, uh, and the police we just started two weeks ago, and that's been a good, good uh, conversation so far. So I don't think it's going to be uh, too difficult to get bring some closure to that in a hurry. That contract doesn't end until June 30th of this year, so we have time. Uh, that's all I have at this point. We're busy with uh, the roads, the paving, Pine Hill. Half of it was done, and they've been reclaiming. The second half, and they'll have that paved hopefully uh, by the end of this week, and then start doing the driveways and get that all closed in for the winter. So, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Is uh, Selectman's communication none? Is approval of accounts payable? <clears throat> We have an account payable warrant 2014 from October 3rd, 2019 for the amount of $619,865.39. We have a water warrant 014 from October 3rd, 2019 for the amount of $14,543.44. We have a payroll warrant. 2014 for October 3rd, 2019 for the amount of $61,472.11. And then we have payroll warrant 2015 for October 10th, 2019 for the amount of $56,960.23. 56 or 54? 54 is what I have. Is, um, is that's it. I uh, make a motion we pay our bills. Second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. You're blowing up tonight. New business is a main revenue service proposed 2020 state valuation. That we get every year or when they, uh, after they come in and, and uh, look at um, our valuation. Uh, this is what they used for the school funding, revenue sharing, all of the above. Uh, it doesn't match exactly what we have in our valuation numbers, but it's actually a little bit less, but um, it's just information that was actually used for the Board of Selectmen to see since you're the Board of Assessors. Uh, you compare it to other communities, um, you can see the differences. But it's just an informational thing. 
No. Doesn't require any. No. No. Moving on up. I had to. I had uh, Karen look at it, and she was okay with it. So, um, any changes they have to have, if she wanted any changes, would have to have it done uh, no later than January fifteenth. So, but we're all set with it. Thank you. The marijuana licensing. So this is just the start of a, of a dialogue. Um, kind of looked at what other communities have been doing. Um, and what I think, just so we can get something on the books, we can always adjust it. Um, so as a start, I'd recommend $1,500 per marijuana establishment. Now, is this for medical or recreational? All the same. All the same? All, I mean, I think, I think they're both profitable businesses they seem to be it just seems to be splitting hairs to treat them differently kind of again i mean once i've had different iterations of different like depending on what size it is medical this it's just you get in the wheat right what about growers <laughs> there's growers in there jade it's it's all 50 so if you're a storefront if you're a grower it's fifteen hundred dollars a year so we have that's it yeah, I mean, what other towns charge? You know. So I have Sanford. Sam okay. Ch Sanford charges fifteen hundred. Um, that's for medical. Um, like Scarborough, I checked has fourteen hundred for a storefront, and they do six hundred for um, uh, growing. Portland, Maine charges ten thousand a year. So I think they're a little they're a little different. <laughs> They're different, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so we have three right now that are on the books. As um, So anything that's been con conditionally approved by the planning board would be what they would need the license. That's what it would apply to. So we have three right now that have been approved. We have up to eight coming. And that includes... Growing, so if someone has growing and a storefront on the same property, that would count as two licenses. So we, that's why it goes from three to eight pretty pretty quickly. So fifteen hundred dollars a year times eight, that's twelve thousand dollars a year. The next point would be, at some point very soon, and I'll come back to you guys. I suggest we cap the number of licenses. I think eight, we're good. I don't think we need any more. Mar commercial marijuana establishments, meaning if anyone else wanted to come in, they'd have someone would have to leave. It, 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 what do you base that on? Just you know, as a feeling you have, or is this something that I, I agree? Eight seems like a lot to me, but as uh, you know, I think I think it, it's based. So it's based off of completely subjective feeling that. Right now, we have these marijuana establishments. They kind of, they kind of blend into the, the background. They don't, you don't go, oh, there's a, there's a pot shop. And it's just, I guess it's just a feeling thing and kind of gauging, you know, we have some planning board members that go, oh, another pot establishment. And I, I, I went for, a, you know, I, <laughs> as a selfish thing, when someone calls up and asks about marijuana, I just want to say, we're, we're done. <laughs> be able to close. <laughs> Do I, we I have talk about um, for an eight month period every single day? Do we have limits on any <coughs> other businesses? No. Or are we just picking on the marijuana people? Um, well, I mean, I'm not. I mean, if 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 we had eight liquor stores, would we then say there's no more allowed in town? I, I mean, think I think so. <laughs> I, I think I think we have, I honestly honestly if we had if it's a great it's a great discussion point if we had aided of anything at, at a certain point I'd be like oh what it, like well I, I I just think of it like I own a business where I sell products you know I I have like 400 SKUs on my thing but if I uh, but right now for like the past two days I've sold basically one thing a hundred times you know. Am I going to say, okay, I'm not going to sell this product anymore because I want to sell other things too? It just feels like being a little nitpicky. I, I, I'm a free market kind of guy. Right, right. If, if eight businesses want to come here and you know, pay the fee and sell pot, and they're making enough money to justify being here, and then four more people want to come here and 
pay the fee and, and there's enough business to satisfy their, you know, their demand, then I don't know why we would cap it. I mean, I think we're just, at that point, they're just going to go next door neighbors. They're going to go to North Burke, South Berwick, Wells, or something else. Well, I think, I think if, if they, let the war of attrition go on, they're going to, either they're going to make it or they're not going to make it, right? Why are we going to put a control on a, on a, this is America. It, it, well, it's like, it's like, you know, no, the chain pharmacies, you no know, CVS, right. Walgreens, you know, right? Aid, they all build on the opposite many, corner. <laughs> a, I think we're better off, James, is having some sort of signage rules, building appeal rules, think different things like that than, than saying, no, you can't do this. Right. And also, it, it, just as a, as a point of, you know, revenue for the town, those businesses are not all going to survive. They're going to fall off, and then someone else is going to start up a new one, and, you know, it's just going to yeah. keep, yeah. you know, yeah. going back and forth. I mean, I'm not sure we'd get past eight, but I'm just saying that I wouldn't want to handicap us. If that's, if that's what the economy dictates, then that's what I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with it because, you know, it, that's what the town needs businesses that are going to needs, – needs revenue. Yeah, it's a, it's a good discussion point. So you already told us where they can go. Route four, route nine. You should have said that a lot. The town should have said that a long time ago. We're going to limit the amount in. They should have started then. Now we're going in in the middle of something and starting it or thinking about starting it. I don't agree with it. It's all, all beginning the discussion, as James yeah, said. Right. So yeah. Yeah. can I ask a question? How much room do we actually have in the areas that they can have these businesses at this point, say Route Four. I mean, do they just allow it to line them up the whole length of Route oh, Four? Be a thousand feet apart. Fifteen hundred feet apart. Thousand. 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 So what, what's available for space? I guess would be not my question. They're building new space, but there's not a lot. You have to build something. It's getting pretty tight on Route Four. Okay. I, I would say we let them build as close as they want. <laughs> what the hell? They're not going to survive. Then they'll be. Something else will move in the building. So they can't go anyplace else except Route 4 at this point? Retail. You can have a, medic, a medical storefront can be downtown. And there's one coming. In downtown Burke, we allow a medical one? Yeah. A medical, not recreational. Yeah. Yeah, medical. Med same thing. Yeah. yeah. Medical marijuana storefront. Yep. Same damn thing. Yep. Yeah, so this, this requires... Um, I believe it requires an ordinance. We would need to adopt an ordinance. And this, Pat and I have talked about licensing, about maybe a liquor license, and then you know, not just singling out marijuana, but trying to look at things that we want licenses for. The thing I like about licenses, it's a, it's a, it's a good way of ensuring compliance that every year they come back, rather yeah. than us sending discipline notices that kind of get ignored, and then we gotta, you know, hey, <laughs> you gotta do this, and then bring them to court. We just say, all right, you, you got to do this, or you're not getting license. license. Yeah. Um, is there been any any uh, discussion or ideas about you know the where the the license and fees would go to? I mean, you know, some some things we have go directly to the department, like you know the code enforcement or planning or something. You know, has there been any discussion about that at all? No, I uh, think no. I wherever it, wherever you guys think right. it's the most appropriate, then. No. Oh. That's a good Something I to think, can about. think of where I could go to. Have we had any police calls to any of the places yet? Um, I don't, I can check into that. I, I know that, you know, the, the, you know, I've sat in on the planning board a couple of times when they've been discussing this, and, and the police, you know, are very open to working with the people. The yeah. building them is they go in, they give them ideas of even where shrubberies and things should or shouldn't be, you know, to create hiding spots and things. So, you know, the police are working really closely with all these groups. We've got a lot of compliments from people about the police department and how good they've been to work with. It's really nice to hear. <clears throat> yeah, we, the establishments that have, have come in are, um, they seem to be really professional. I think we're, we're lucky in that sense. That's all I got for marijuana. Any other questions? As, as, as James said, this is something that's going to be coming up. Yes, uh, I know the state's still working on uh, getting their things all finalized still. And, so uh, are we going to come back to this, the planning board, on, and have discussions on 
Any changes to the ordinances? I think I think it's out of the the planning board. We decided we're going to wait until next year to continue adjusting the ordinances. That's, okay. That's what it seems. Till June. Till June. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For next year's. And in terms of licensing, it's in it's in those select board's hands at this point. The planning board recommended to in institute licensing. So I, like San, what Sanford has is they have their their code is different from ours. So we have the way that we have it, we have different ordinances that are just a separate document and we have our land use ordinance. Sanford has a whole where their ordinances are embedded into one document. So it's easy enough to replicate where we I'm not sure how we do that yet, but between Lee J and our town attorney, you can figure it out. Do they have a limit on how many can be in town? They don't. I think they have. I think they have like 15, and they're uh, they're not allowing adult use. They just have medical. They're not going to allow adult adult use at all. They don't. They make enough money through um, medical, and they just I, I forget what their exact position on it, but it just seemed like they're happy with just medical. Yeah. Thank you, James. Sure. Uh, senior volunteer program. Me again. <laughs> um, so, Borough for a Lifetime just had their um, age friendly action plan certified by AARP and the World Health Organization. Um, so, that's online um, under. We got a good community resources page that's got a lot of um, livability and how to age in place and got a lot of good tips in there. And I think if you go to Envision Berwick, there might be an age friendly piece where you can actually see the plan. One of the action items in the plan is a volunteer program that I think is an interesting idea. Uh, SACO has had this program for a long time where folks can volunteer at the town hall, but also other affiliated things through the town hall um, in all the different departments. Um, so they volunteer a certain amount of hours and they get um, credit off their property taxes. Hmm. So for folks in a, a one person household that make 38,000 or 43,000 for a two person household, in SACO they work or they volunteer 59 hours and they got a $599 credit off their property taxes. So I guess I'm just gauging interest. Is that something that we'd wanna do? Um, I could think of two things that we need volunteers for at the town hall. We have an infinite amount of clutter, old plans and maps and <laughs> knickknacks. And I have bowls and plates in my office from who knows when. <laughs> Left over from when the lunchroom was down here. <laughs> yeah, right. And then um, helping with filing, I know like that's one of, the, one of the things that the program goes for. We could always use help with filing, and I'm not sure if I, Patty and I probably need to have a discussion about what the clerk's office could use help with, or um, I don't know if there's transfer station or other committees or. Um, well, the finance office wants to take all the records that are upstairs on the third floor and in the attic, and and put it on discs, and that would require volunteers to. To do all that Is right and in the planning and code office we have a long-range plan of trying to move most of our files to online so you wouldn't have to come into the town hall necessarily to see your file you just you could go to a map online click on your property get your assessing records your your planning documents and what have you is it done by the ordinance in Saco? i i'm not sure what how they did it i'm not i haven't i didn't find an ordinance yeah okay because I know that the, the state allows the towns to have an ordinance to uh, uh, reduce seniors based on income. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that, that's a nice program, but, but it's also a lot of work to set it up and yeah, it's, I, set that's, guidelines. Right. So, so we, 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 we would have to uh, allocate a certain pool of money right. to use to pay off property taxes for the volunteers that do this. That's right. You no, know, so that'd be the one thing we'd have to you know, determine you know, a, a set amount until we use it up or something like that. In the first yeah. couple of years, you'll get a better idea of how many people are going to volunteer. Yeah, right. whether it's, even if it's just one, 
you know, Great. Well, it, it, you know, and as, as you said, is uh, it it doesn't sound like it's a huge you no know, expense to the town, anyways. Is you know, a few thousand dollars may cover you know the first year or something that we have to you know try it out. So it's not a huge leap. So. so I'll be back around budget season then. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, it's right around the corner, actually. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> it, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. it's a good idea. Yeah. yeah I, 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 very I, much so. Yeah, it's a good, it, it just seems like a good way that for seniors that could use it will help on their property taxes, but also um, can help get people out of the house. And, yeah. I mean. <clears throat> interact. You interact. Were, I mean, you're, you're at the town hall for 15 minutes. You run into... 20 different people. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I try to come on off hours. Uh, thank you, James. Um, impact fee revision. No, nope, you got purchasing policy first. Oh, I purchasing policy. I think you policy. have copies of that. No. 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 Okay. Um, I'll get them out to you um, so you get to read it before our next meeting. Uh, I won't be here for that, but you, uh, we have a conference. Uh, but we... I think you were talked about upping, the, so we put uh, anything over ten thousand had to go for um, the regular bid process. Anything less than that, uh, from five thousand to a thousand, still had to be you had to get three different bids. But right. um, it gives the department heads and, and us a little bit more leeway because sometimes five thousand to ten thousand is a lot of stuff that <clears throat> just yeah you know it's hard, hard nowadays to get. It know an estimate for anything yeah. you know. but I'll get the and the other th only other change in this is that um, it was uh, if I'm not if the I'm the purchasing agent for the town but if I'm not here then the finance director would, would take that role uh, so we have two people to cover it but. is that something that we can approve or does yes. it need to be approved that's by a the policy okay. so you you can approve that yeah okay now impact fee revisions this is your bellywick. You wanted to do something with this. We, um, I, I gave you something from the ordinances about setting it up, and James can talk a little bit more about that. But um, there's a whole process we have to go through um, if we want to change stuff. You want to address that, yeah. James, as a planner? Yep. Sure, yeah. I think uh, what's needed is a public hearing and uh, just Actually, notice no. twice in the paper. I, did, I have a little gu guide here for steps for developing impact fees. So uh, identify facilities and services affected by growth. We've identified infrastructure as that um, thing that's affected by growth. Identify specific capital projects. So what we've talked about is so the identified capital prog projects caused by growth would be we need new segments of sidewalk that connect the new development downtown to the, I guess, to, to the downtown. To the or central. to the library or. Right. There's, not, there's not, nothing that we can use for existing sidewalks right. and things like that, right? Right, we can't. No. We, couldn't go out, we couldn't go out and replace the sidewalks in front of the town hall, you know, that existing because they're there and, you know, the growth in town hasn't caused us to, you know, outgrow those. Exactly. I mean, that's a good way of saying, that's rephrasing. That's what they mean by existing deficiencies. Right. Exactly. Uh, salaries and things like that. But. So we just need to develop. We actually have a, if it's infrastructure or if it's, um, the tricky part is developing a formula because um, you have to tie it to, you can tie it to bedrooms is the way that we've been doing it, yeah. which ties to people. And you can kind of tie the people to the, cost of the sidewalk construction we actually have a cost figure we have an up-to-date cost figure of what a sidewalk costs per lineal foot um, so you just need to tie those two together so when a three-bedroom development comes in you have that cost schedule that and i can i can I, mean, I can i can work on it yeah because we, we currently have the impact fees going to recreation and open <coughs> space I've talked in the past of whether we wanted to, you know, change that formula and how we redo that, or if we wanted to add something new to it. You know, is if we wanted to keep it, you know, as the impact fees for recreation and and uh, open space, and add 
another impact fee on top of that or take the existing formula we have and break it down you know, so my, my suggestion would be something like half of half of the fees go to infrastructure now and the other half be split between the recreation and open space or something along those lines okay. you, know, and, you know I want I want I want the developers to help defray the costs of improvements, but I don't want to be you no know, overly burdensome either. Yeah. Well, I think that's all in negotiations. When they go before the planning board, you know, there's no there's no reason we can't negotiate. We want the sidewalk rebuilt in the back of Cumberland Farms and that subdivision all the way down to town. No. They're going to have to figure that in the job. Yeah. It, it happens all over the state. Every They're always doing that. You're going to we, rebuild we've, this intersection. We've right missed there. opportunities here. Right. You know, so where we, we should have had people putting sidewalks up Sullivan Street and down Pine Hill. And it's about $1.5 million worth of sidewalks. Right, so if that field on top of Pine Hill gets sold for houses, you yep. know what they're going to do to get their permit? A lot. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I, I think we can start looking at that and hold schedule some public hearings, and line up, get, get what we want, how we want to change it first. And then after the first of the year, start um, holding those meetings and discussions and how you want to change. We stand with building permits. Are we, are we compared to last year, are we ahead of last year or are we so about the same? In terms of single family houses, yeah. we had 12 permitted this year. But then you add on um, the apartments. So that was 16 two bedrooms. So it's still, I mean, it's, if you, if you include the apartments, it really right on, right on par with last year, yeah. but it's way less than 2017. 2017 was more. In 17, we had like f close to 50 single family houses that were built. Really? So it's dropped down that much, huh? Yeah. Why is that? You know? Your boy Trump. Nobody wants to spend $80,000 for a house law. I don't know. Oh. It's it's a good it's a good question. Uh, they, I think the housing market is slowing down, but um, but they're also bigger. <laughs> the houses are much we did, larger. We did have a lot of uh, rehab. Our office was slammed all summer, so we had a lot of uh, you know reconstruction and a lot of people improving the houses they already have. Just to give you the current balance, right now in re the recreation impact fees, we have $48,183. In the open space, uh, we have 75950 And we have to keep in mind we need to spend it. So I know on some of the open space stuff, we're looking at some land around the recreation field that There's might be... There's system right there. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so... The one thing on the... For open space is an idea of using the, the funds. We have a map in the planning office which points out the most um, ecological valuable areas in town. So the darker the map, the more there's like wetlands or endangered species or nature habitats. Those are endangered to be developed. People would put houses on there and it'd be devastating to the ecology of the area. So it might be a good idea to take a chunk of that and just buy a chunk, give it to the land trust. If, if we need to spend it, that might be a really good way of doing it. All right, I think I'm done for now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, don't go too far. <laughs> so the open spaces, it, it, it can only be used to buy more open spaces? Yes. Okay. But it's gotta be, Not it's gotta be based on, open spaces. Um, where the money came from, the, for, driven by the people yeah. that... Like buying a sober home and creating an open space wasn't good. Could well, that it was good, but I didn't qualify for didn't open qualify space. For anything. Okay. Right. right. Um, this is a set in the polling hours for the November, November 5th state referendum and town supplemental warrant as the town clerk recommends 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. No, nope. I would move we accept the town clerk's recommendation to set the polling hours from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'll second it. November 5th. Any discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Thank you. 
We have no quick claim deeds. We have no abatements. Second public comment. Anybody want to cut up and speak their piece? Nope. As we have no executive session. Other business and non-agenda items, anybody? No? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Beautiful. Thank you, everybody.